well, we've changed to probably the most classic electric guitars you could possibly lay your hands on. So these are original um, early, well, I was going to say Telecasters. In fact, the first one isn't a Telecaster at all. It's a Broadcaster, which um, if you know your Fender history, um, it's what Fender called the Telecaster before Gretsch intervened and said, hang on, we made some drums up called the Broadcaster. You're going to need to rename it. And um, it was duly renamed as the Telecaster, but the early ones um, are known as Broadcasters. That's what's on the headstock. And in actual fact, they have a kind of character all of their own that stands distinct from many of the later Telecasters yeah. sonically. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit more about this guitar, Mark. So this is a 1950 Broadcaster. Um, and again, um, I think they only made 100, something like that. So really special guitar. Um, and it's got a real, exactly what you said, Jamie, it's got this really unique sound which sets it apart from, from the Telecaster. Uh, much, much chunkier uh, much deeper sound, I think, to it. Um, some seriously powerful pickups in there as well, as we as we can hear, you know. So, yeah, no, sorry. Oh, no, no, go, go, <laughs> let's hear some more. That yeah, is. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you get immediately, as compared to the 54 Strat, you're hearing a lot more kind of bite and um, yes. body and power there, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. What's interesting though is you're on the bridge pickup there, and I don't don't yeah. think you've got the tone roll, rolled off or anything. But there's there's no. a bit more depth there. It's not just snarl, is it? There's, no, there's... no, there is a lot of depth to that. And it, you know, when I hear those really early tele broadcaster players, you know, that's the sound I'm hearing. Uh, guys like Jimmy Bryant, yeah. those sorts of players, you know, and um, you can really just the personality of this guitar really shines through in, in their playing. Um, of course, there's there's quite a lot of features on it that if you start to look a little bit more closely that um, kind of tell a story of its very early origins. There's the slot head screws holding in the single ply yep. um, phenolic black pick guard, the origin of the, the black guard term when we talk about black guard telecasters, yep. we're yep. talking about the black pick guard. Um, and also the earliest broadcasters and telecasters had a, um, a wiring kind of system that's a bit different from how it is today. So in, when you move the pickup selector to the neck position, you get this kind of um, sound yeah. with the, the bass yeah. pre-rolled yeah, off. Yeah. It's more of a jazzy vibe and a lot of the, a lot of the early broadcast players were in fact jazz guitar players. Um, so um, that was that was the reason behind that that um, it evoked the sound of some of the uh, Gibson arch tops, and so not only was it was it really um, really kind of leaning to the uh, the needs of the co of country players and western swing players, it also fulfilled the needs of a lot of a lot of the jazz guitarists of the time as well. And, and actually, still does. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, it's interesting because a, a lot of people have that. Um, they don't necessarily like that system because there's an awful lot of treble rolled off on the, yeah. on the neck. But yeah. you, you, you feel kind of differently about this. I yeah, believe. no, I do. I think the guitar. Um, I think if you're going to play one of these guitars, that that was the configuration of it, and, it, and exactly it was that configuration for for that very reason. And and um, it feels to me that um, that it's a far more creative system to have and offers a more diverse mm. range of sounds um, mm. to have it this way than, than, it, than it does the other way. Let's do a little bit playing on that on yeah, that much sure. maligned uh, uh, neck. Yeah, I yeah, well again, um, you can turn the amp up probably a little bit, because that's one thing you do need to kind of think about. Jazzy. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So, in, so in a way, perhaps our ears have become a bit too used to the standard settings. There's plenty, yeah. plenty of musical sounds to be had. Yeah, out, yeah. Things I like that. So, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's a few other things that we we think of when we talk about broadcasters. Uh, we often think of quite chunky necks. Does this one? Have yeah, a, yeah, yeah. This is this is ridiculously chunky. I don't think there's broadcaster with a non-chunky neck, and the weight of this guitar is absolutely insane. Um, you know, you, the, if only you could 
you could equate that on a on a film to how heavy it is. But it is it's a it's a serious bit of wood, yeah. um, which just adds again to the nature of the, these two to the, you know the the differences between these two guitars. And in fact, all these different guitars that were produced at that time all unique yeah. to themselves, really. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier on, we're, we're ridiculously lucky today because we've got a 52 telly here, which is That's right, which yeah. is the kind of classic telly in a way, yeah. isn't it? I mean, even yeah. more so than the various 60s ones. Yeah. The 52 is really, for many players, the definitive one, even yeah. though it was almost the earliest. Um, should we plug this in and have a yeah, little listen? absolutely. Yeah, that is a heavy old beast, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's got some weight on it, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, again, you know, this is... Um such a classic sound and, and again what I'm struck by is we, we talk about that fender twang and the snarl but actually there's that depth again isn't there? Yes, it's exactly, sort of exactly exactly that's right it's, it's not what you expect straight away maybe from a from a later telecaster yeah. um and uh yeah no, a lot a lot more depth than uh than you might initially think yeah very different guitars yeah. these two in, in many other ways separated by only two years so mm -hmm. tell me the story of this guitar how did this come into the um, so yeah well um, in, in the show uh, in the seven decade show obviously we, we we chart the story of the early black guys <laughs> and um, obviously a 52 is an important guitar to have in the collection to use um, and we use it for Roy Buchanan mm -hmm. obviously um, Keith Richards as mm -hmm. well um, so um, and it, it fills that fills those requirements perfectly um, and uh, now again, just a lovely. This was just a lovely sounding fifty-two. It was, um, as soon as we played this one, it was mm -hmm. it was the one we wanted to go for. Yeah, and this is a bit more of a normal weight as well, isn't it? So exactly. The, the the first thing you notice is the, is the weight of this guitar, which is a lot more kind of consistent mm -hmm. with with the Telecaster. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I'm happy about that when you've got it around your neck for um, you know for twenty minutes yeah. of the show. So should we hear a few more sounds? Sure. On this yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One quick question before we um, move, move on to the reissue that you have here um, mm. is uh, I know some players like Guthrie Govan for example I believe he said yeah. that tellies should be strung quite lightly with nines or something yeah, like that because yeah, yeah. they should be slinky I know other people yeah. like Josh Smith string them up with huge yeah. great bailing wire yeah yeah what do you what do you put yeah on well it depends again it did very much for me um, each each guitar I string differently could depending on the, on the on on the sound I'm trying to achieve from it and the and the feel of the guitar itself um, yeah, I mean, personally, uh, you know, uh, I think I think broadcasters and early early black guards lean to kind of a heavier sound and a heavier gauge string. Um, I think they really the tone of the guitar really comes across a lot, mm -hmm. a lot better. But um, you know, guitar gauge strings are really just uh, a personal mm -hmm. a personal preference for me, and um, you know, there is no right or wrong really with that. Nice. Okay, so um, it, like the 54 Stratcasters that we looked at, or the 54 Strat we looked at earlier in the custom mm. shop um, version thereof, mm. um, 
I thought it might be nice to also bring in um, a latter day recreation yes. of, of these guitars. Or what, what in yeah. fact is this here? So this one is uh, is a no caster custom shop no caster that uh, that we've had in and around the, the collection of myself and Phil have owned um, for a while and mm -hmm. currently again resides with another great friend of ours. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, but it's a lovely guitar and the, the difference here really clearly as soon as you hold it, Jeremy, I'm sure you can tell is the weight. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely yeah, it's it's light as a feather. And um, that person again for me is a joy when, you, when you're playing it, you know, when it's, when it's around your neck uh, for that length of time. And for those um, who've never heard the term no caster before, yes, as we yeah. alluded to earlier, uh, Fender were obliged through um, threats of legal action by yeah. Gretsch to take the change the broadcast yes. name. But there was a period where they were in the process of sorting that out and renaming mm. the guitar, where the um, guitars were issued without a name on the headstock, and that's yeah. where the no caster that's kind the of no caster name. Came. So in between the broadcaster and the, and the telecaster, yeah. um, so quite quite unique in that respect as yeah. well. You know. So this is so in a way this is although this is a a, a modern day guitar that's built to uh, like an old one, it it does form an interesting part of this trio because it represents that transitional period we discussed. Yes, yeah, sure. well to have a telecaster, a broadcaster and, and a lowcaster of sorts here is fantastic. Yeah. Should we have a little listen sure. to it? See how it rack, stacks up well, against the, um, the originals. give you that sort of funkier kind of she hears a kind of Motown-y vibe here yeah, straight away it's got all of that going on absolutely what, what's immediate two things that sticks stand out um, immediately in the in a sort of very unscientific ab is one um it's the bridge pickup has retained that ability mm. to to almost be a rounder voice than you might expect yeah. the second thing is it's quite a lot quieter than these two isn't it yeah no yeah. definitely maybe that has something to do with the the wood yeah possibly yeah. just the, the whole make of the thing but absolutely also might have something to do with the fact that i didn't have it turned up properly <laughs> I think that's probably one thing though, it's quite an interesting point. The minute um, I'm playing um, the 52, instantly my, I'm honed in on thinking about, you know, having to shape the sounds a bit more mm -hmm. carefully with the controls. Whereas with this guitar, mm -hmm. it's, sort of, it's more of a, in a sense, a plug in and play. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's my excuse. Mm -hmm. couldn't be simpler could it the electric guitar I mean there's this yeah. so few parts to these uh, you know broadcaster no caster telecaster mm -hmm. the early ones it's about as simple as a guitar could be really mm. and yet there's so much versatility in each of these instruments you could play almost anything with them it's true and that's been demonstrated over over all the decades time and time again that the, the go-to mm. guitar for rock guitar players for jazz players for country players mm. um, right across the board and can you continue to do that it's that quite incredible you've got three guitars here that are all looking pretty much the same but are all very different to each other as well which, okay. is, which is great yeah well thanks very yeah. much it's, oh, it's uh, been great thank you so much thanks cheers